This has been Ingram of the Atlanta Braves Radio Network, and it's time to go riding with the Braves, presented by Chevrolet. Let's see who else is joining us today. Riding with the Braves, we're joined by Kyle Wright today. We're pulling up once again in the Chevy Trailblazer, and I'm glad the AC works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like today. A little spicy out today. Yeah, not a bad little rig, so this will be our our uh, car for today. And first off, thanks so much for, for joining me. I felt like I owed you a ride, because for people who don't know, we were in Chicago, and I was waiting on an Uber, and you were waiting on an Uber, and it was the same kind of car and I jumped in your car yep. and hijacked your Uber and then I realized wait a second I'm in the wrong car so I felt like I owed you a ride today yeah I think it's yeah that's definitely fair <laughs> yeah we, me and my wife we pulled out there and like I think that's ours next thing you know we see you guys hop in <laughs> and we said ah well maybe they won't make it too far yeah I asked the driver said where are you taking us and he told me I was like that's not us <laughs> we had to do the walk of shame uh, yeah. as we hopped out of the car Man, it has been so much fun to watch you this season. What we're seeing, I think a lot of us knew this was coming, but it's got to be so gratifying for you to have the success that you're having and, and be comfortable. How great has this season been for you? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's like I said, I've struggled a lot throughout my career. You know, had some flashes of, of success here and there, but, you know, it's mostly been a struggle. And so to finally kind of put some things together and, you know, actually help the team win on a more consistent basis has been you know, a blast, like exactly like you said, I feel like I'm comfortable out there. I feel like I belong. And, you know, that's half the battle in this game. It's so mm-hmm. difficult. So just knowing that you can compete and, you know, and, and compete against these teams that we're playing uh, is really important. It's been important for me so far this year. Let's go back to last year. You spent most of the season in AAA. And then we see you in the World Series. There had to have been moments last year at AAA where you're thinking, this is good for me. I'm, I'm really progressing along. But probably never thought, hey, I'm going to be pitching in the World Series in a few months. Yeah, no, it, it, last year was interesting in kind of its entirety. Had a start against the Mets early in the year, and I think I got in the, in the second inning, and that was it. That was kind of when I was like, all right, we got to do something here. Like, something's not right. Kind of hit the reset button, and, you know, kind of from that point on, I started to put figure some things out, and um, eventually had a really good stretch in AAA. Now, with that being said, never thought I would have, you know, got on the, the postseason roster in the World Series roster. You know, we were at our uh, alternate side during the playoffs just to stay ready. And, you know, all of us guys down there were taking it as serious as we could and um, trying to use that time to get better. But at the end of the day, you're just so far disconnected from what's actually going on. You know, we're watching these uh, postseason games, just particularly against the Dodgers, and seeing how intense they are. And you're like, we're just so far from that because we're just scrimmaging ourselves every day. Um, and then, you know, when I find out I was going to have a chance to be on the roster and I got put on the roster, it was just kind of crazy how, you know, where I was at one point in that year to then where I, you know, was getting to finish up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I didn't pitch a whole lot, obviously, in the big leagues, just two starts in the World Series, but I feel like I accomplished a lot. Um, if I wouldn't have done the things last year, I definitely wouldn't have been able to help in the World Series, and I definitely don't think I'd be where I'm at so far this year, too. So that was like one springboard to another to this year. Yeah, it's just, yeah, one thing kind of went to another, and I've told a lot of guys, like, after pitching the World Series and pitching pretty well and then us winning the World Series, like, how can that not give you some extra confidence, right. you know? That's, right, That's, you know, the the peak of our sport, and, um, you know, I got to get in there and, and help us help us, help us us win a little bit, and... Uh, yeah, so it's just, like I said, how can it not give you, give you confidence? When you said hit the reset button, was that a reset as far as your stuff, how you use it, different pitches? Did you have a change and hey, I want to throw more of this pitch and less of that? How did that all work out? Yeah, it was kind of a little bit of everything. Um, you know, kind of fix the mechanic. There was a couple of mechanical things that I kind of fixed that was that was a big part of it. But I think for me, then also using the curveball more. That's mm-hmm. kind of been my big it was a big pitch for me last year in the World Series, and it's still been, you know, my my, my, my pitch this year. Uh, being able to use it at any at any count, throwing it for a strike, putting guys away with it. So that's something that I, I really try to increase my volume of. And ever since I've kind of gotten that together, then I feel like all my other stuff's playing up a little bit better too, just because hitters have to kind of respect that pitch and, right. and be ready for it in any count and in any time. So it, would you say that that's the biggest difference in the guy you were going back to the 2020? in LCS with the Dodgers versus the World Series last year? Because you look like two completely different guys. Yeah, it's uh, so I started in 2020, I started working with Zach Sorensen, who is our, uh, our Braves mental performance coach. And he helped me a lot in that year um, with the mental side of things. But there was still something a little off mechanically. Mm-hmm. And I think last year I was able to kind of blend all those together. Once I kind of reset, I was able to blend all those things I learned on the mental side of the game and 
you know, routines and attack and just there's a tons of things that go into on the mental side. I was able to kind of pair that with, you know, my mechanics being on right, using my best pitches, attacking the strike zone, and kind of all that started to blend together um, towards, you know, the last half of the AAA season. And mm-hmm. um, then, like I said, then kind of carry that into the World Series and the spring training. And then, you know, each start I've had so far this year. So it's like in 2020, I was close, but it was just for me, a mechanical pitch usage was just a little – she wasn't quite there. Yeah. Um, so then I kind of finally blended those two together to, you know, get back to really, I feel like myself. And, and the thing is, we're in a day and age now where, and you're a first round draft pick. So I, I'm sure there's an added pressure of, hey, these guys took me, you know, the first round. I'm supposed to be X, Y, and Z. I feel like, and you tell me if, if I'm wrong on this, I feel like now if your first round pick isn't winning in the big leagues within a couple of years, you wonder well, what's wrong with this guy. That's just not how it works. I mean, it takes a while to, to figure yourself out, learn how to win in the big leagues, and to be quite honest, the path that you chose is a lot closer to reality yeah. than that first pit, that, that that first path that people sometimes expect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely, you know, I think when I first got drafted, I didn't think that. I didn't really feel like there was any pressure just because I was here in the minor leagues. At the end of the day, there's not a whole lot a lot of pressure I mean people will follow you but you know I I pitched pretty well in the minor leagues coming up and then when I first came up and then really when I first started to struggle I guess that really would have been probably in 19 when I had some starts that's when you kind of started to I started to question some things like what am I doing here like you know why why am I getting hit why am I walking guys like this isn't me and you realize it's it's just a different game Mm -hmm. it's you know the hitters you're facing are just very mature like they, they know the strike zone they know what they're looking for it's just a lot of things you haven't learned yet. Um, right. You know, as much as everyone would love to be, you know, like a Mike Soroka or, or even Ian Anderson. Ian, you know, obviously had some uh, injuries coming up or else he would have been <laughs> up right. earlier. But, you know, like guys like that who've come up right away and had instant impact, I don't think people really realize how impressive that is. Right. Because it's not that easy. It's not as easy as those guys have uh, made it look just to come right in and, you know, have success right away. So, and there's other guys throughout the big leagues who have done that too, but – and that's just a huge credit to them for, you know, really staying within themselves, trusting themselves in what they do and not trying to change and be something they're not, um, then kind of adapt from that. I, I remember a conversation I had with Tom Glavin. This was about two, two and a half years ago. So this is kind of right around 2019 when you're talking about yeah. some of the struggles you had. And he said, Kyle Wright is going to be a great pitcher in this league. I just hope it's not for another team. Yeah. And I remember him saying that and thinking, okay, if Tom's saying that, then I believe him. Yeah. And sure enough, that's what's happened. And I know you had conversations with him and other people yeah. like that. How much did that help you along the way, talking with other guys who have had success in this league? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I talked to Tom a little bit early, um, like I said, around that 19 time. And um, I, I talked with uh, Small, John Smoltz a little bit after the 2020 season, too, because I think he was a guy when he first kind of came up, struggled a little bit. So. Just, I mean, one, just getting to talk to some Hall of Fame pitchers yeah, is yeah. cool in itself. But then just to kind of hear, hear some things, you know, what worked for them, how they were able to kind of navigate their way till they really, you know, caught their footing and took off and obviously were incredible for the Braves for a long period of time, Hall of Famers, and um, done all kinds of great things. So it's really cool just to kind of get their perspective on things. And uh, like I said, it's been a little while since I've talked to them, but, um, you know, those things still kind of stick with it. I want to go back a ways. You grew up basically in a baseball family. Your dad was a coach, right? Yep, is he yeah. still coaching to this day? Yeah, he is. So he's technically retired, but he still uh, volunteer helps as a pitching coach at uh, yeah, UAH, University of Alabama, Huntsville. So he just can't quite stay away from it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your brother pitched too, right? Yeah, he did. Now he's a high school baseball coach as well. So what was it like being in a baseball household, and how much did that really help progress you as a young pitcher at the time? A lot. You know, I just feel like the main thing is just we're kind of – always competing i have a younger brother too who's also still playing but like we just just the competition um you know i I think getting to play for my dad i feel like that was that's something you you it's just it's so cool to be able to do that play Mm -hmm. for your dad granted he was always harder on me and my brothers but i think it ultimately helped made us made us better too but i mean i think my dad is still one of my best pitching coaches just because he's seen me for so long he just has a good understanding and a good feel of kind of where we're at and if we're feeling good and whatnot so but i think just growing up in that that competition has been you know a huge thing for for myself and um, my whole family I think you know obviously there's, we're still in baseball so um, they're still a lot of, just still doing a lot of good but um, yeah it, it's it's been really cool um, just to, to kind of share all these moments with all of them absolutely wrapping up with you let's talk about this rotation 
the guys that you're around. I mean, you, you got a guy as young as Spencer Strider and a guy as, as experienced as Charlie Morton. What's it like being in this rotation and, and what you guys are capable of for the rest of the season? Yeah, we have a ton of talent, um, that's for sure. And um, I feel like we've got a good mesh of, uh, you know, some guys with some less experience and guys with a ton of experience. Mm -hmm. you know, guys who pitch in some really big games and um, have kind of, it's just a good mix of, of having a, a good mix of starters and, and relievers and it's, it's just a lot of fun. That's the other thing too. We just have a bunch of super competitors and um, we enjoy going out there every day and taking the ball and competing and um, trying to win. So um, we have, like I said, we have a ton of, ton of good talent, ton of big arms and talented arms that um, I think can, uh, you know, pitch with anyone in this league. And um, I think it's going to be excited to watch us, you know, how we navigate this whole season. Absolutely, man. Well, you've done a great job to this point. It's been uh, a ton of fun watching you, watching you grow over the last few seasons. Thanks so much for stopping in with us today and spending some time with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It's been, it's been fun.